The organic food industry is one of the fastest growing sectors of U.S. agriculture. Consumer demand for organic food products has increased at an average of 20% a year since 1990. About 73% of conventional grocery stores now sell organic food products. Approximately 7% of the total food sales occur in farmers markets like this one. Organic fresh fruit and vegetables account for about 2.5% of the total food sales in U.S. agriculture. Today I'm talking with Alan Wysocki, a professor from the Department of Resource Economics at the University of Florida in Gainesville. And we're here at the Union Street Farmers Market, one of 75 farmers markets in the state. So Al, we're really fortunate in the state to have a wide variety of products for consumers to choose from. That's right, Danielle. In Florida today, there are over 130 certified organic producers producing a variety of goods from vegetables, fruit, uh, sugar, herbs, and livestock products. Wow, that's a wide variety of products, Al. With that many products, I would think it would be challenging for producers to capture a market. What market outlets are available for organic producers? Well, organic producers have several marketing opportunities and alternatives, each with unique characteristic pros and cons, if you will, that they need to decide, decide on. Because decisions made by producers, especially those involving marketing, are probably some of the most important decisions they can make, which is really make or break for their operations. When we talk about marketing options for producers and organic producers, we tend to talk about two different uh, tracks, if you will. One, uh, direct marketing opportunities and indirect marketing opportunities. Direct markets are the one-to-one -one interactions like you're seeing here today at the market, where it's between producers and the end users, the consumers. The other option is indirect markets. Indirect markets are based on the middle people, or we like to say intermediaries in the marketplace. And these are the primary channels for organic products uh, are direct, but there's still a growing amount of indirect market channels, and we'll talk about those a little later. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about the advantages and disadvantages of direct marketing. Okay, so direct marketing, uh, producers benefit by capturing more of that revenue stream, but they benefit by uh, interacting directly with their end user. They, uh, the end user then receives fresh and nutritious products, and usually at prices that are as uh, expensive or as, uh, as cheap as uh, traditional outlets like grocery stores some cases even less expensive than that. Right. Producers also benefit by exchanging information with other producers and getting to know their customers. A lot of times uh, when we've done surveys we find out that people who buy from farmers markets are buying as much from that person as they are the product so they build that connection, they build community ties, and they promote this a growing trend of local in the marketplace. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I hear a lot of happy conversations around us. So Absolutely. <laughs> But as in anything, there are some challenges that uh, direct marketers will face. Uh, just because they are able to uh, bypass that middle person, so to speak, doesn't mean they can avoid some of the functions, such as marketing, uh, promoting their products or service. They can't just, you know, build it and they will come type of thing. So, so they have to still perform some of those functions and requires, in a lot of cases, more time, more effort. Uh, working the cash register and those kind of things where if they weren't doing direct sales they wouldn't have to do those kind of things. I see. So you did mention farmers market was one example of a direct market. What are some other examples of direct markets? Other examples of direct markets include pick your own, okay. roadside stands, farmers markets, and then we shouldn't forget community supported agriculture programs. So the direct market outlets sound ideal for many of our small diversified producers. But what marketing options are available for our larger producers? Well, that, Danielle, would be some more of the, what we're calling indirect marketing opportunities, such as the use of uh, selling your product through uh, middle people called brokers, or maybe taking it to a terminal market, say at uh, Pompano Beach here in Florida, for example. Uh, they can also sell directly to retail outlets such as the grocery chains, natural food stores, those kind of things. And there's also the use of um, restaurants, too. Uh, some restaurants are more than happy to buy directly from individual producers, but the majority of restaurants today still buy from food service operators as well. That's another outlet for these intermediate sized people. I see. So there are a lot of indirect market options too. Um, it'd be interesting, Al, if you could run through some of the advantages and disadvantages of indirect markets. Sure. Indirect markets, probably one of the main advantages would be that you can move the same amount of product with less 
contact points of uh, end users. At a farmer's market here, you may be selling a couple peppers here and there. For an intermediary, you could sell a whole truckload. So you can sell more of your crop in less time, so to speak. Uh, that's one advantage. Uh, you also may have access to people you couldn't sell otherwise by going through an intermediary, such as a local grocery chain, for example. Uh, so those are some of the positives there. Uh, some of the things you have to be concerned about would be uh, these intermediaries often require much stricter grades and quality standards and packaging standards. So not, you can't just bring something in your own little basket. You have to pack it a certain way and, and meet certain standards. So those are some of the, the downsides or the things you have to be aware of if you want to use intermediaries. Right. I hear from some of my producers that those standards can be pretty high. Yes. And, and in some cases, higher than even a USDA grade standard. So. Wow. So the, the <laughs> idea there is you need to understand your market and know what they want. So to secure a position in the market, producers might want to explore both market options, direct and indirect. Yes, and some, some producers are able to make that transition, but it's often a matter of how do they best utilize the resources they have. Do they have the time to devote to producing a quality product or service and then spending time to come to a market like this? Uh, for example, you need to develop your clientele in markets like this, so I don't think you can just show up one week and not the next and develop a regular clientele base. So those are some other things you have to be aware of when you're trying to do that. And above all, you have to have high quality and consistent product really no matter where you sell it.